Welcome back to another installment in our quest to build the world's most powerful Power Mac G4. Now that we have just about the fastest possible dual processors in this machine, today we're focusing on the Achilles heel of Macintosh gaming, graphics. And it's good timing too. In the spirit of fun events like December and Marchintosh, this month is GPU June. I really love these things. Where a whole bunch of great retro computing creators are doing videos around graphics. So it's the perfect time to tackle the absolute hackery that we're gonna do today, because arguably the best GPU for this Power Mac is the GeForce 7800 with 256 megs of VRAM. The only problem is it was never actually released for Mac. So we're gonna have to hack a new firmware onto the card and then physically modify it to work in the MDD's 4X AGP slot and hopefully not break the card in the process or blow up the Mac. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy mutilating PC parts to work in old Macs, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We have many more builds just like this in the pipeline, including a very special and rare machine that we're gonna soup up beyond all reason very soon. So. Definitely stick around for that. In last week's video, we installed an absolutely ludicrous processor upgrade in this machine, a dual two gigahertz processor card with much more modern 7448 G4s, which was custom built by Herd over on the 68K MLA forums. This card took us up to a whopping 1633 Geekbench score, which for context, Steve from Mac 4 ran the same benchmarks on his dual G5 2 gigahertz Power Mac 7 comma 2 and it scored 1823, which is only 12% faster, not even. And I think that this graphics card can close the gap even further. Well, as long as we can successfully hack the firmware onto it. Now declaring any graphics card to be the best graphics card is almost as dangerous as applying thermal compound on camera. Lots of people will have different opinions of which card is best for which use case, and often everyone is right for different reasons. But what really convinced me about this card is the testing that Bare Feats did way back in the good old days of 2007, where they compared a flashed G4 7800 against the fastest Mac compatible 4X AGP card on the market back then, the Radeon 9800 Pro, and this GeForce absolutely crushed it in all scenarios and sometimes more than doubled the performance. For example, in their Quake 3 test at 1920 by 1200 max quality, the Radeon 9800 Pro got a respectable 121 frames per second. The GeForce though got an absolutely ludicrous 232 frames per second. Unreal Tournament 2004 was even more impressive. The Radeon Pro got an acceptable 48 frames per second, but the GeForce demolished that score at an incredible 121 frames per second. And I'm really hoping we can get some similar results. And then we'll see if this makes a difference in classic Minecraft compared to the performance we saw in the last video, which was the CPU upgrade alone. And then I think it would be interesting to try some internet stuff on here, especially trying to play a YouTube video in 10.4 Fox, which several of you requested in the comments last time. Okay, now before we go any further, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's mirrored Macintosh shenanigans, PCBWay. PCBWay has long been the go-to source of PCBs and PCB prototyping for the vintage computing community because of their extremely high quality and their great pricing and turnaround as fast as 24 hours and now they offer even more services like custom CNC machining, extremely high quality 3D printing. It's really amazing just how much you can get done through a single source PCB way. So I hope you'll click the link in the description below and give PCBWay.com a try. So the hacked ROM for this card is available on Mac Elite, which I'll link down below. But to get the ROM onto the card, unfortunately, we're gonna need a PC. Good thing we've been down this road before, flashing a G4 6200 for the G4 Cube. 
So all we need to do is dig out the weird DOS desktop from my packed computer stuff closet, which hopefully is the most difficult part of the project. So we should already be set up with free DOS and NV flash on here. Uh, well, actually it was on a USB flash drive, which appears to be missing. So I'm gonna make another USB flash drive. All right, so we'll just have to boot up off of this flash drive with free DOS and V flash and the hacked ROM. And uh, I guess we'll need a monitor too. There we go. Just about the farthest thing from what we normally cover on this channel. All right, so I actually haven't opened this yet before I just started filming. So let's find out together if this is actually a graphics card in there. And I, yeah, I see it through the little cool window in the back. Yeah, it's pretty cool that it came in the original packaging, although it's not new. It is used. Oh wow, it comes with everything. We've got our EVGA driver disc. If we were using uh, Windows XP, we have a nice little S video cable. One of these handy VGA to DVI adapters and the card itself which is very nice and shiny. Wow. And what's interesting about this card is it takes more power than the motherboard alone can provide. And it actually has just this Molex connector, four pin connector like you would have for a hard drive or a CD-ROM or something to get the extra power that this thing needs. Now, using this in a Mac, there is a little bit of a caveat. You need to find the one with the correct BIOS and it has to start with 5.70. Ones that start with 5.71, that's actually completely incompatible. It's a completely different chip and it won't flash for the Mac. So I guess the next step is let's see if this card actually works and we'll just pop it into the weird DOS desktop and see if we get a picture. So this desktop is pretty weird. It has only half height cards. So in order to flash our new video card, it's just gonna kind of be hanging out the top of it. We can't put the cover on the machine, but that is the way we like to do things around here as janky as possible. You know, this actually doesn't even fit in here unless we unplug the DVD drive. Not like we need it anyway. And I just noticed we can't even fit the Molex connector in here. We're going to have to remove this whole drive bracket from this case to give this card the power it needs. Well, wow, that's pretty disgusting in there. So I've got my tiny little vacuum cleaner here. Let's get these dust bunnies out of here. All right, so now we should be able to fit this in here the right way around, just fine. And we'll give it some Molex power that used to go to the DVD-ROM. And yeah, let's see if this boots. All right, well, I actually have to take the whole front bracket off so this will actually fit in the case because otherwise it doesn't make a full connection. All right, so I've got the card installed, sans front bracket, and uh, we've got the monitor plugged into VGA on the new card. Let's power this thing up. And we have video. So the graphics card works and it boots into FreeDOS just fine. So what we're gonna have to do now is actually kind of annoying. I need to put a second PCI graphics card in there, boot with video off of this graphics card to be able to flash the AGP card because very annoyingly, this system does not boot up off of the built-in graphics if you have any other graphics card installed. So you actually have to have two graphics cards installed to be able to flash. All right, we're booted off of the PCI graphics card. We have the Nvidia card installed as well. So now let's try NVFlash. And I think 
dash B is backup, and we'll do backup 7800.rom. And it found the G4 7800 GS and it saved the backup image just fine. That's a good sign. All right, so now if we do a DIR, we have 7800.rom. That's the new ROM. So all we have to do is NV flash 456 7800.rom. Nope, looks like we need an older version of NV Flash. All right, so thanks to Pixel Pipes, I now have NV Flash 4.42, and Pixel Pipes is actually the mastermind behind GPU June, so very fitting that he's the one who saved the day. So now we do NV Flash dash U dash P dash F 7800 dot ROM and it doesn't find it. Okay, let's try version 5.13 of NV Flash, which I got off of extreme overclocking forums, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's the one I used with the cube, so let's see if this works. Hey, I think it is working. Update display adapter firmware, press Y to confirm. Supported EEPROM, not found. Okay, so after trial and erroring a couple random versions of NV Flash, I found version 5.57 does see the correct name of the adapter, G47800GS, so let's try to flash it. All right, we are getting a lot further. Update display adapter firmware, press Y to confirm. Hey, it's working, storing updated firmware image. It worked. Okay, so remember how I said that this video card takes more power than the motherboard was capable of providing? And it needs to have this extra power in this four pin Molex in the back. Well, the power supplies on these machines are very prone to failure. Even the Samsung one, which I have, which is generally the more reliable one, but I was really worried about its capability to keep up with both the processor upgrade and the new video card. Well, I'm happy to say that this problem seems to have solved itself because the power supply has decided to fail completely of its own volition. But that's kind of okay, annoying, but we're just gonna have to move up some plans that I already had for this machine. Namely, installing this Standard ATX flex power supply, which is a small form factor ATX power supply. And we need to use this small form factor because the original MDD power supply is this thin kind of completely custom unit. So this needs to be able to fit in the space in the case that the old power supply took up. Now, the one thing is the pinout on the connector for the ATX power supply is completely different than the pinout on the MDD's power supply. So we have to make an adapter cable and uh, don't pay any attention to all this electrical tape. It's fine, I'm a professional. But in all seriousness, converting an MDD to ATX power isn't really that difficult and you can find the pinouts to make this cable yourself online and I'll post a link in the description below. And uh, probably you shouldn't just twist the cables together and use electrical tape like I did, but I really just wanted to make sure that the MDD still worked before I went through all the trouble and hassle of picking all the pins out of this connector to rewire this the right way. And in fact, I really hate doing that. And if you hate doing that too, you can find these cables online. In fact, somebody on eBay makes these and sells them they look a little something like this. I did order one of these and uh, a little bit expensive, but worth it because I do not feel like picking all of these pins out and stuff. I'd rather just have somebody else make it. So this particular FSP power supply is really excellent for this purpose because not only does it very nicely fit in the space left by the original power supply, but if you position it on top of the little ledge here, 
the outlet actually matches up with the hole that's already in the case. And we can just mount it here. I might have to drill a little bit of a hole in the case here, just in this metal bracket. But yeah, this is gonna look completely stock from the outside without having to pull any other electrical shenanigans inside the case. So that's very exciting. All right, so we'll just plug in the motherboard cable. And then this motherboard needs just a little bit of extra power. So we will plug in one of these connectors as well. And plug it into the motherboard. Oh, and one unfortunate caveat of doing this ATX mod is that we lose the capability for ADC power, which is what this lovely monitor is built to work with. And if you don't know what ADC power is, well, this monitor only has a single cable coming out of it. And yeah, this one is um, a little bit worse for wear because the plastic is basically turned into the consistency of a tortilla chip and just shatters immediately when you touch it, so it's covered in electrical tape. But this cable does power and video and USB all at the same time. But unlike the stock Apple power supply, an aftermarket ATX power supply can't supply the power to drive this monitor. So we have to use one of these fancy adapters to plug in the ADC connection, which converts it to DVI and a USB cable. And yeah, just turns this into a regular old monitor with a USB hub in it. All right, well, funny story. It turns out the original video card either died when the power supply died or the DVI port doesn't work, but I'm not getting any video to the monitor, even though the computer chimes and all the fans and everything spin up. So I found this video card out of, well, I don't really know what it's out of, probably a blue and white G3 or no, a G4, I don't know. I think it's an NVIDIA card, but this has VGA, so we're going to try this, but unfortunately, I can't find my DVI to VGA adapter, so this monitor won't work, so we'll have to bust out a VGA monitor to test it. And what's more fitting than our favorite boring Dell LCD? So we'll just slip this in here. All right, so everything is together, monitor is plugged in, VGA cable is connected. Let's turn it on. All right, it chimed. Come on video. There we go. It's alive on ATX power. So one annoying caveat of Apple's ADC power for one plug monitors is that they used pins that were unused on AGP4X, but on AGP8X, these pins are actually used for other stuff. So this AGP8X card, if I just plug it into the 4X slot, these pins, pin number three and pin number 11, will prevent the computer from booting altogether. Now, fortunately, there are a couple ways of correcting this, and in my cube, I actually removed these pins, but for now, I'm gonna do it kind of the classic way with a little bit of clear tape and my trusty Kershaw knife. Okay, so the graphics card is installed and it's all taped up and I ran an extra long Molex extension cable to power it. And the one other change I made that actually a lot of you recommended is I put the SSD back here and connected it to the ATA100 connector instead of the ATA66 over here. So it should be a lot faster. Yeah, monitor is on. Let's see if this thing starts. Hey, the screen's on. <laughs> it works. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> there it is. Booting into macOS 9.2 off of our 
souped up extreme graphics card. That's amazing. I am so excited. Okay, so I've closed this thing back up and we've booted up into Leopard and this is actually super quiet now with the new power supply. A lot of the noise that these MDDs are famous for comes from the two fans in that big server grade power supply. But thanks to modern technology, this one PSU is 500 watts and more powerful than the original power supply was and it's gold rated so it's very efficient. Yeah, there it is, chipset, GeForce 7800 GS. We have Core Image, Hardware Accelerated, Quartz Extreme, Supported. That is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I can see the Quartz Extreme because you can see through the menu bar, it's translucent. These animations are super smooth. They were a little bit choppy before, but now they're beautiful. So I guess it's time to take our new benchmarks. All right, well, benchmarks complete. And I actually ran these a second time because the first time I had a bunch of stuff open and I didn't realize it. But now benchmarks complete with no other apps running. And we scored 1634, which is an excellent score. But it's also hilarious because it is exactly one point higher than we scored before, 1633. So... All that effort for one point in Geekbench, and evidently I forgot to save it before. But yeah, all that effort for an extra one point in Geekbench. But Geekbench really doesn't matter that much. What's more important are real world tests. So first, let's see what this is like on YouTube. All right, this actually loads surprisingly fast. I mean, I don't think I've ever had YouTube results pages scrollable in 10 4 Fox on a G4 before. But let's take a look at the last video about this very computer and see how it plays. It was built as a no compromises G4 powerhouse and it was the last of its breed. This is actually playing pretty well. All the controls work well. The frame rate's decent. Let's see what we're playing at, 240p. Let's up this to 360. And it's a uh, much better quality. Honestly, <laughs> this is perfectly watchable. That's amazing. Okay, let's try even higher. So let's go up to 480p. Yeah, it still plays at a reasonable frame rate. Okay, the real test. Let's go back down to 360p. And let's try full screen. <laughs> Look at that. It's full screen with a decent frame rate. Full screen YouTube at a reasonable frame rate on a G4 Mac. All right, so browsing the internet is fun, but let's do our ultimate test and let's play some Minecraft. And we'll pop into the Action MC server and it looks like we actually have somebody already in there. All right, so here we are getting 115, 120 frames per second. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so we had a peak there Wow, 150 frames per second. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, look at this hockey rink. Nice. Wow, this is proper fast. 123 frames per second while we're running. Okay, so I think I still have the draw distance down pretty far. 
Yeah, render distance tiny. Let's put this back to normal and see how playable we are. Wow. Normal draw distance and we're in the 40s. That's amazing. Before, we were lucky to break out of the teens in normal draw distance while we're running around with dips into single digits. This is making, this graphics card is making more of a difference than I thought it would in Minecraft. Yeah, we are running around a very built up area and we're getting upwards of 50 FPS. Yeah, this is amazing. We are above 60 FPS running around a built up area. Nice ATI logo here, pretty fitting, although I guess I prefer Nvidia now. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, I am blown away at the performance here. Okay, so that'll do it for today's installment of this mirrored Macintosh monster. I'm so happy with where we are in this build. We have just about the fastest possible dual G4 processors at two gigahertz in this machine, along with the fastest possible video card running flawlessly. And we got incredible performance both on the internet and also gaming, playing Minecraft. I cannot believe we got 60 frames per second, but we're not done with this Mac yet. In fact, I have a bunch of plans in the pipeline, including this SATA card, which supposedly works with Mac OS 9. And I'm really curious to see if this is faster than the SSD on the SATA to IDE adapter on the ATA 100 connector. I also think we need to do a little more with cooling on this machine because we're running up to 48.6 degrees Celsius, which I think is a little warm. So I wanna see if we can shoehorn some other fans in here. But if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more monstrous Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris, Greg, Justin, Sorta Eclectic, Sting124, and Tom, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.